Welcome to Specific Love. In this video, we're gonna be finishing off the top of this wishing well. In a previous video, we completed the base. If you hadn't seen that, we'll put a link to that in the description below. Otherwise, let's get started. Now that I have the main lower structure complete, I'm gonna start working on the roof. And to do that, I need a couple four by fours. Now I need to prep these, make sure they're cut at the top of the angle. I need to start, dig some holes, bury these, put some concrete in, a whole bunch of stuff. So let's get started on that. Now I need to cut some 45 degree angles here off the top and to do that I grab my old miter saw here just so I can throw it on the floor and move it around easily. Now that I have the columns cut to shape, I cut one more additional piece that'll go at a 45 degree angle. This will provide some added support between the two columns so there's very little chance of warpage or just being blown over. Now to hold everything in place, I'm gonna be using some pocket screws, so let's drill these out. Now I'm gonna cut some of the frame supports for the actual roof. I'm using some two x four pressure treated. I'm gonna cut these down now. Now to join these two x fours together, I'm gonna to create a half lap on each of these, then I'm gonna screw them together. Now, if you have a dado blade, it'd probably be easier. You could take out large chunks, but I wanted to show that you could actually use just a standard blade. If you make several little cuts across your wood here, you can then take a chisel and just carefully start knocking them out. Either way, whether you use a dado blade or not, there's a good chance you're gonna have to come back in here and use a chisel to clean this up. So we're just heading straight to that process now. Now they get the half laps cut in. I'm using a corner piece here just to make sure everything's lined up. Then I'm gonna put some screws just to hold it in place. Now that I have the frame all cut to size and screwed together, I'm gonna be using some cedar to do some trim on the outside, just so it gives it a little bit more of a natural look. Now that we have the main frame pieces assembled, I wanna cut off a lower section, mainly these lower corners, so in case you bump your head on it, you're not going to hurt yourself. So I figure I'll go about midway and cut it at about a 45 degree angle across here and here. Now that we have pretty much everything cut to size, Time to dig some holes. Now my wife asked me to get this well house in about the same alignment as the actual well house. And to do that, I'm just gonna use a long board. Excuse me, buddy. We're gonna lay this across, get this as close as we can in alignment with the house, and then dig some holes. Now I need to get these holes about two feet deep, which I got a little bit further to go, but that way they should be about even across and I can get everything else nice and level. Wow. Now that may not look like it, but that's almost perfectly level. Now before I can go any further with those poles, I'm actually gonna take this back out there, put it over the well, put the poles back in, then I'm gonna lift this up with some concrete blocks so I can get under it, and then we'll fill in the holes with some concrete. Let's do this. And for this setup, I plan on using this fast setting concrete. Move, Tyler. Move. I need you to move.
When I was installing the top post, I realized a couple of my screws on each side were just not in alignment. So I grabbed my pocket hole jig and I just drilled a few more. Now I have one on each side, so four screws for each side. This will be awesome. Then on the bottom, I added a couple cheap clamps just to help to hold the post in position until the concrete had time enough to dry. And if these got left out overnight, I wasn't worried about them. Now to give this post a little added strength, I want to connect it and screw it to this base. To do that though, I need to fill in this little hole with a triangle. So let's go cut that out. All right, here's one of the triangles and I have one down in here. And I should be able to glue that in place and that way I can have enough bite for the screw to go through. And remember when you're putting glue on end grain, you gotta put a little on, wait a little bit, and put a little more, because it soaks in quick. And to try and prevent getting glue on this outer edge, I'm actually going to try and install this from underneath. Pretty close, it's not perfect, but just remember it is an outside fixture. It's gonna flex a little bit in the temperature. Once that's in place, just to try and help it, it stay there long enough to here, I'm gonna clamp this, give it a few minutes, and then we'll do the screws. Also, just to let you know, I only put glue on this outer edge here, not against this main board, just in case I ever have to take it apart. I don't want all this to be glued together. That's why I'm gonna put screws through here. Now to do a screw all the way through this four x four, I'm gonna need a really long one. I have a four inch screw here, and I'm also going to inset it about an inch, so I can have as much bite into this outer frame as possible. Now moving back to the frame of the roof, I'm going to be drilling some pocket holes to attach this to the top rail. Now for the outside rails, I'm just going to go with one screw in each because these are going to have some additional supports. But the center one, I'm going to have two on each side because it does not. Now when I secure this in place, I want to add an additional support that runs from the 4x4 out to the two by fours over here. So I need to cut this at a 45 degree angle and cut these a length. And I need four of these. Now I'm gonna be using pocket screws to hold this together. And then I built a solid one for the center frame that doesn't have a post. Now the trim I'm putting on the sides, I'm actually gonna space those out a little bit from the frame. That'll give the roof a little more support and it'll protect it just a little bit more on the sides from the rain. So I do some two by fours that I've cut down to four inches. I got eight of these and I'm gonna attach them somewhere right in there. And they attach these, you probably guessed it. Gonna be using pocket screws. Now that the frame is all done, I wanna add one additional piece right about in there. That'll give this whole structure a lot more strength. It'll also help even out. I get a little unevenness from this side to the other. This is a little more narrow, that's a little wider. I have a feeling that's either due to a little bit of warpage or just slight misalignments of the cut. In either case, this should give it a lot more strength and straighten that out. And for that piece, I'm gonna be using some more cedar fencing. Now I'm gonna cut this down on a miter saw and then rip it on the table saw. Now if you look right here, you'll notice that I actually have this raised up. It's about the height here of what the width of one of these cedar pickets is gonna be, because I'm gonna use those as the shingles, and then I'll put the initial one at the bottom already at the angle that I need, and so for the next one and so on, they should all be laying flat on one another. 
Now for the shingles, I'm gonna be cutting down these pickets. Don't want them to hang over about three inches or so on each side, just so it'd be a nice little overhang and look really good. So let's cut these down. Now for this setup, I'm gonna need a bunch of these shingles. In fact, about 18 of them. But I also wanna make sure I look at all the end grain and face them all in the same direction. So if it does warp at all, they'll all uniformly look about even. Now when I'm installing this first board, I want it to stick off about one and a half to two inches off of this bottom piece. And that'll allow the water to run off of the shingle versus run down the frame. Now when installing these screws, I only came down about an inch and a quarter. That way when the next board goes on top of it, it'll overlap it and there's no chance the rain will get on top of it. And when I'm installing the second board, I again want to make sure I cover up these screws. I'm going to come down about two inches, make sure they're even on the edge, screw them in place. Now once you got a few of your boards up here, it's also a good idea to take some of the existing boards and just start stacking them on the top. You want to get it to where it's about even with the top of the peak there. And that way you'll know if you need to adjust any of the boards because it'll be a lot easier to adjust some of these in the middle just slightly so it's not noticeable versus having a one at the top that's really crooked. Here's kind of a look from the top and you can see that this is lining up really nice. Now once you get both sides up to the top, you can have to do some fine adjustments at the point. As you can see here, this board is actually overlapping the top. So we're gonna have to go back and trim this one and we're gonna try and glue two of these together so it'll be nice and solid across the top. And after a few measurements, we're gonna rip this one board down to about 15 degrees. Now I've clamped this to my bench with just a hope so I can have a little more control over it. We're gonna put some glue along this edge. Then I'm gonna take this board and carefully position it. And then add some brad nails to help hold it in place. And just a reminder, this is type three glue. So it should work great outdoors. I'm just gonna give that some time to dry. Okay, I just took it outside for a quick test fit. If you notice, this is flush, this is flush, and this is about a half inch off. I realized when I was putting these roofs together, I forgot to check and make sure everything was square with them. So they're slightly off, but that's okay. I think I can trim this down a little bit, maybe trim one of these down at a very, very slight angle and make it still work. Now I plan on using my hand plane to trim all of this down, but this blade is definitely dull. But I have this nice sharpening setup I picked up off Amazon. I'll put a link to that in the description below. It goes from 300 grit all the way up to 14,000 grit. So this should definitely be sharp. All right, that may not be perfect, but that's a lot better than it was. Now if you notice, this edge does not exactly line up with this edge, and that's because this is not a 90 degree angle here. I should have trimmed this angle here the same as this one when I was cutting them on the table saw, but I forgot. And so we're gonna try and go over this with a hand plane real gently, and if it's not perfect, that's okay. It's very unlikely to be seen anyway. Never underestimate a nice sharp hand plane. And after a little bit of massaging, that looks a lot better. Now to hold this in place, I'm gonna actually put some screws on the underside, just on the other side of this board. Now to keep the screws out of sight and out of mind. It's finally done and it looks awesome. So here's one last view. Now if you wanna see how we built the base, make sure you check out the description below. I'll put a link there that'll show you just how we did that. Otherwise, have fun building. It's finally done. <laughs> Dang it. Enjoyed it. Make sure you know. So this. Mm -hmm.